Hello everybody, welcome to the Sovereign Village Project. This video today is showing what we're doing here on the site, the five acre site, Marathon Acres, to prepare the area for planting next spring. Uh, we're coming onto it a little bit late and getting a late start, so we're not gonna be able to do most cover crops that we want to, um, but there's still a lot we're able to do and I figured I'd show you because I know a lot of people are buying homesteads right now. There's a real rush back to the country. Um, so I know there's probably a lot of people who are in the same position of uh, trying to prepare for next spring while they can Using what little bit of growing season they have left. So I'll go ahead and show you that. We've got our helper here today, Miss Holly She's a really big help. Her job is to turn sticks into mulch She does a really good job of it Thank you, Holly now you might be wondering why I'm cutting off trees so high instead of cutting them off at the ground. Here's another example of that. This oak, I cut it off maybe a couple feet up. And the reason for that is that we are going to pilar these. A lot of species will grow back, so out of the stump many little sticks will grow and we can go through with a machete or a hand tool and chop those as mulch and throw them onto the ground. And so that, what that does is that pulls nutrients from deep underground, 30, 40 feet underground, or however far those roots are going, into really old nutrients and, and uh, sources. And then we're laying that on top of the soil and letting it decompose and turn into soil for our plants. Um, so it's a way to garden in another dimension. Instead of gardening and farming on a flat level and using the nutrients you have there, you're gardening deep underground, and in the case of nitrogen fixing trees and such, you're pulling things from the air and dropping them onto the ground as well. So it's a way to really regenerate your soil for free. So I would encourage you to research that. And um, what I'm doing here in this cleared area is doing that in a circle around the growing area. And so that will allow us to have just a never ending supply of mulch. Um, slowly over time, I'll replace those trees with nitrogen fixers and things that are uh, fruit trees and nut trees and a little bit better suited for also providing us with a yield. But for now, just the mulch is great. Also, when I cut down this tree, I went through and I shredded up the sticks with a machete and hand tools, and, and uh, for the bigger ones, I used a chainsaw. And so that'll allow that, to, uh, allow that to rot down a little bit quicker and become soil for us next spring and past that as well. As far as for what we're planting, we're doing lots of dynamic accumulators, um, things that will bring phosphorus and nitrogen and things like that, things that have deep tap roots and, and will... Uh, that will go and chop and drop and they will provide really good things for us for our plants next spring so one of those is comfrey which is also very medicinal these leaves here do great things for your soil now there's a lot of debate over whether they're really adequate dynamic accumulators or not but i think they're easy to work with they also cover a lot of soil they cover up a lot of area so i i know what i'm working with as opposed to just chopping and dropping weeds um, and they have uses in the medicinal world and as forage so they're pretty useful also, puppies like them. We're also planting out buckwheat. Uh, not only is dynamic accumulator, I'm hoping that that will spread its seed naturally and just kind of go throughout the landscape. I'm really gonna encourage that with these seed heads um, because we'll be grazing in tractors a lot of rabbits and chickens and things. Apparently dogs like buckwheat too. Holly likes to eat everything. Uh, we've also got radishes growing. They till up the soil for us. They grow great with no amendments at all, no holly. They grow really well. Um, and this is also a test to see how they did in the soil without amendment. And as you can see, they're doing a great job. Uh, I like to test what vegetables and crops do well with no amendments, so I, I know what's gonna just already work well for me. And radishes is definitely one of those. Uh, we're planting out clover in addition. Clover, Timothy hay. A lot of just experimental things, seeing what's gonna grow, and also a lot of these things we can till under later as a cover crop, and I think the clover is gonna do fairly well over the winter, that's my theory. Um, and I would also encourage and offer a word of caution. Uh, as you're clearing out land, if you're doing it this fall or at any time really, really learn to identify what's on the landscape first, because this landscape is just full of edible and medicinal plants. And if I didn't pay attention, I would just clear everything and chop everything instead of leaving it. For example, we've got sumacs all over this property. This is a sumac here. Sumacs have a berry that is really tasty. You make a lemonade-like drink out of it. You can make wine out of it. You can make jellies out of it. Um, and the birds love it, so it really attracts pollinators. And a lot of these sumacs, I'll show you, 
will become very tall and so they're a great food forest layer because they're already established. That, those are sumacs there. They're about 20 foot tall. Um, so I can plant the nut trees in front of them, fruit trees in front of that, and then the shrubs in front of that and get that layered effect. Um, so I would really encourage you before you clear your land, try to identify every tree that you can so you can make a calculated decision before you take anything away so that you know, am I getting rid of a fruit, tr fruit tree that's already been growing for 10 to 15 years, like, or a nut tree? In a lot of cases, you may have excellent producing trees or shrubs or you know small medicinal plants or edible plants, and you may choose to keep those. They, they may also be nitrogen fixers. So don't just go through and clear land willy-nilly. You've already probably got a lot of resources on that land. Even in a yard, you might have plantain or a lot of good things like that. So identification and foraging books are really handy to really learn what's already on your land. Half of your farming might already be done for you. So. That's what we're doing here on the five acre site at Marathon Acres. I uh, hope you all are having a good fall, clearing out your sites or preparing your beds for next year. Now is a really good time to be laying on deep, deep mulch. It'll rot down over the winter and become great soil and uh, things like this. You gotta change your way of thinking. That's not, that's not a thorn, that's not a stick. That's a carrot. It just needs to go through a little processing first and I'm gonna let nature do that processing for me. So happy gardening everybody, happy homesteading. Have a good one, stay safe and stay well.